we are good to go. You'll have to look. Okay. Set to go. We're live. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'd like to call the Tuesday, April sixteenth, Meeker County Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Will you please join me with the pledge? Is there anyone here from the public who would like to comment? Seeing and hearing none, we'll move on. Um, we all have the board agenda. Is there any additions to the agenda, Mr. Uh, no additions. Mr. Chair, I will move the agenda as printed. Okay. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Schmidt. Is there a second? I'll second that. And Commissioner Bredesen seconds. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Mr. Letson, the consent agenda, would you please run through it for Happily. us? Happily. We have approval of the April 2nd board meeting minutes, approval of the Health and Human Services County and Hospital Accounts Payable, appointment of Jason McCoy to the EDA board serving for a six-year term expiring June 2nd, 2030, approval of a quote from Marco for renewal of the county phone system maintenance, and that is the consent agenda. Are there any questions on the consent agenda? Hearing none, would... I would entertain a motion to approve. So Mr. Moved. Chair, a second. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Schmidt, second by Commissioner Olberg. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Tim, I believe you're on the, oh. on the clock. <laughs> water at the wrong time. <laughs> Great. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Tim Steinert, uh, Meeker County Veteran Service Officer. And I forgot to wear my county pin today. I, I, I will wear so it did I. So. <laughs> today, uh, I'd like to present to you uh, a report on the Veteran Service Office, uh, what we've been doing for the past year, and some other activities that extend even beyond that. Uh, our mission, statistics, activities, and trends that I saw in uh, 2023. Mission, as you can see, uh, our mission is to advise, counsel, assist veterans and their families in obtaining earned veterans benefits through federal and state programs and to act as an advocate on their behalf or direct them to other authorized agencies or providers as needed. I know that's, uh, that's, that's a pretty big mission statement, but what does that really look like? We work with veterans on a daily basis uh, and we're helping them and assisting them in applying for uh, mostly VA disability uh, compensation, something that was incurred during service, they were hurt, uh, they have a current chronic condition, and we help them apply for that. That's the majority of what we do. We also help a number of veterans once they uh, uh, receive disability compensation, or even before that, uh, and getting enrolled into the VA healthcare system. And I should also note that the uh, VA healthcare system is not insurance. It's a healthcare system. You can still have private insurance. But it's, it's totally separate for veterans. It's a great system. Most of those uh, veterans use the St. Claude VA healthcare system. Uh, we also uh, work uh, quite a bit with uh, surviving uh, spouses and dependents of veterans on burial benefits at the, after the veteran has passed. And uh, if there's a homeless veteran, we have a process for that. A lot of times we work with uh, MACV, Minnesota Assistance Council for Veterans, put them on the homeless registry. And as needed, we work uh, quite a bit with the St. Louis County, or, excuse me, uh, Meeker County Social Services. Next slide. Accreditation and certification. Uh, there is a accreditation and certification program uh, with the VA that exists to ensure veterans and their family members receive appropriate uh, representation on their VA benefits and claims. I had to go through some initial training, pass a test, 
it's called TREP training. And then on an annual basis, I need uh, to continue uh, my education, <coughs> CEUs, uh, and then also pass a test for the uh, accredited organizations. Mostly in this county, uh, we work with the American Legion, Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs, and the VFW. There's a few uh, uh, disabled American veterans, uh, claims organizations or claims groups we work with, uh, and then the National Association of County Veteran Service Officers. I, I don't know of any that I've done since I've been here for that. Uh, the, the bottom note, uh, professional development uh, last year, I was fortunate enough to go through a uh, St. Cloud State program for County Veteran Service Officers. It was a couple hours every Friday for several months, and we focused on creative writing, motivational interviewing, medical terminology, and legal terms. In this job, we constantly have to be learning, so uh, that's just uh, another way to do that. Uh, that's the pilot program I went through, and now they offer it every year. So, uh, next slide. To give you an idea of the number of veterans we see, uh, uh, averaged out on uh, veteran contacts per day uh, uh, for 2023, it turned out to be uh, 16 per day. Uh, that averaged out 43 appointments per month. Uh, and, the, and the appointments really do give us the opportunity to prepare uh, and, and better serve the veterans when they sit down in the seat in front of us. Um, there's time to go through uh, all their records to make sure that we're uh, making them aware of all the benefits that they can apply for. So it, it really does work very well. We have a couple of time frames that are walk-ins uh, uh, during the week, uh, averaged out 26 walk-ins per month. But they don't always come in during that time frame. But if, if we can accommodate them, we, we certainly will, even if it's not a walk-in time frame. Phone calls, 249 per month. On the actual uh, phone call that uh, Corey ran for me, there was more than that, but a number of those calls, a percentage of them are uh, messages left for us, so I, I didn't consider that to be a veteran contact. Next slide. This is the GDX, or the VA's Geographic Distribution of Expenditures, and you can see the uh, time frame for that up there. They run this through... Uh, a formula and they come out with a veteran population, uh, dollar expenditures for major VA programs, and, and the figures you uh, are looking at there are actually Meeker County figures. I would estimate the, the veteran population at over 2,000, a little over 2,000. I think in our records we have over 5,000 veterans, and some of them deceased in our, our uh, VetPro software. Um, you can see the total expenditures there, that's between compensation and medical care and a few other items is uh, 24583000 That's a pretty big number. Compensation and pension, that's the disability compensation, and if they meet the requirements, the pension uh, uh, is, is uh, another program that they have access to. They can't have access to both. But those are, are real numbers uh, or, you know, based on their formula, 10694000 directly uh, monies in Demeter County. And you can see the, the dollar amount for medical care is fairly large as well. So, so uh, if they if they're on a pension, retired military, they can't get other any other compensation. So, um, and I have the same question, Beth. When I first saw it, yeah. as pension. So, so there's compensation for a disability incurred during service that you receive a, a monetary amount mm -hmm. for. And then there's, you can also, you can't receive both, but you can get a pension if you meet the eligibility requirements. It's, that's not service connected, so it's not a retirement. Oh, okay. So I know, I know that kind of threw me for the, yeah. for the longest time when I saw it at first too. I was like, oh, that, that's not a pension. Okay. But, uh, and, and on a daily, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, we get questioned that all the time. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next slide. So uh, community outreach, uh, an important part of the job. Um, there are six American Legions in uh, Meeker County and uh, two VFWs. And uh, I get to those meetings at least once per year. Uh, um, and I bring a lot of resources along. My goal is to uh, inform them of, of anything new that's going on as well as to have them come into our office even if they are service connected. It, it is good to come in and do an annual benefit review uh, just to make sure they're taking advantage of all the, the benefits that are there for, for them. 
uh, Meeker County Fair booth. Uh, that was a hot experience sitting in those pole barns, but uh, that's okay. They put me right in the middle. So, but uh, that's okay. No breeze for you. <laughs> no, no, I was sweating it out in there. And, and, and actually, no surprise, but there are periods of time during that fair when there's hardly anybody there, and it's always based around food time. So lunchtime and supper oh, are busy. Boy. Yeah. And yeah. Veterans Day is fairly busy too, but it's typically lunchtime or supper. So, but it was good. It was good to get out there and, and see everybody. Um, Watercade was really uh, successful last year. I handed out over 50 business cards. Uh, made a, a lot of great contacts with, with contacts with veterans and their families. And uh, I think it had a lot to do with the weather. Last year's weather at uh, Watercade was was phenomenal, mid 70s or something like that, and just beautiful day. A Memorial Day presentations. I did two last year. One in Forest City, and then one in Darwin. I think the mayor said there was a, what, 60% uh, chance of sun and, oh no, take that back, 40% chance of sun and a 60% chance of train. Like, you know where that, uh, <laughs> where the, it's right next to the train yeah, tracks. Yeah, betcha. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> memorial, Veterans Memorial. Uh, so I enjoy doing those, and that's always good to get out there and see uh, everybody. Uh, incidentally, um, I think you have to have a golf cart if you live in the Darwin area or a side by side, because there was at least 10 of them lined up. <laughs> it helps. For sure. in them. So, but it was good. It was good to see everybody there. Uh, great location. You can't miss it. Uh, Senior Health Expo, that's every year in Grove City, uh, put on by the Grove City uh, Care Center. Uh, went to that again this year. Uh, burial benefits presentations, I did two, one in Litchfield here, and then one up in uh, Watkins. Um, and I know that's not a topic that a lot of veterans want to hear about, but uh, it's always good to get out and, and, and talk to them about that. A lot of times I'll do the presentations and they won't ask a lot of questions, but afterwards they will come up and get the information. So it's always good. Uh, parades, uh, as you can see in the picture there, um, that's uh, one of our vans uh, with the uh, receiver hitch uh, stand on it for the flags. And uh, Eden Valley, Litchfield, Watkins, Cosmos, and I think the last one, Vassal. I think I tried to put them in order. Eden Valley is the first one. Valley Days, I believe. Uh, Litchfield, of course, uh, Watercade, and Watkins is Grout and Beard Worst. Same, Worst as Same as the fair. Same time as the okay. county fair. Same week. Uh, and then Cosmos and then and Dassel's in September. So, next slide. Transportation program, uh, uh, currently have two vans uh, transporting veterans uh, to VA doctor's appointment. And in some cases, it's not at the VA, the Minneapolis, or the St. Cloud VA, it's VA directed. So it could be in uh, Wilmer, it could be somewhere else, it could be Glencoe, it could be you know Hutchinson. Uh, so they do have that community care program. Uh, sometimes it's because the specialists are not available or it's just more convenient for the veteran as well too. So two vans, uh, you can see up on the picture, the blue one, um, that's the same picture you saw with the flags in the parade. That's a 2022 Chrysler Pacifica. The 2022, uh, just recently donated by the Meeker, or 2023, uh, recently donated by the Meeker County Veterans Council. Um, the picture you see there, the silver van on the right, is uh, uh, actually getting wrapped today. St. Cloud. So uh, that'll be nice to get that van back. Currently we have uh, six volunteer drivers, drove uh, over 22,000 miles and transported 263 veterans last year. Do you have a lot of veterans that prefer not taking the van and just drive up themselves because of the weight or? Sometimes no? they will say that they don't want to wait but that's I mean we've taken up to five that's Quite a number sometimes it's just one but yeah that sometimes they say they want to you know they just want to i hear that from people and i'm like well you know you can't do anything about that it, no depending on how many appointments for some but so. uh the uh, canteen or the uh the restaurant or not right. restaurant the uh, yeah, cafe at the st claude va is really nice and that's where most of them wait yeah a lot of them will wait in there and the drivers are in there as well too incidentally the drivers actually receive a free meal when they go up there, uh, the volunteer nice. drivers. So, yeah, very nice. But yeah, yeah, it. Uh, we've heard it before, but uh, you know, um, 
it's, it's the way the program is set up. It's odd number of days during the week we go to the St. Claude VA, and even number of days during the week we go to the Minneapolis VA. The van looks great, by the way. Love Thank it. you. Next slide. Is that is a free meal for the driver? Is that something that Vets Council does here, or, or is that an offering through the VA at St. Cloud? It's the VA in St. Cloud. They go through a, a background check and a program that's part of that volunteer services program. They, they receive that free meal when they go out there. So yeah. Get to go to the canteen and <laughs> you know, the get to. As a matter of fact, I was up there last Friday renewing my uh, card for the VA so I could have access to the Veterans Benefit Management System. And the van was sitting right right in front of the canteen, <laughs> nicely washed. <laughs> but uh, it looked really nice, and the drivers do get a lot of compliments. It does look nice. It does stand out, so it does a, a good job. Um, all right, uh, new information. Um, Litchfield uh, Area Community-Based Outpatient Clinic, uh, or CBOC, uh, that has made it through the VA business plan approval process. The next step is appropriation, so it has not been funded yet. So if it's funded, the uh, earliest possible date for the Litchfield area uh, community-based outpatient uh, VA clinic would be 2029. So about five years from now. So I just, I got that information just uh, just recently here from the, uh, uh, right from the um, communications director at the VA. Uh, post 911 veteran service uh, bonus, uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's a state benefit uh, for eligible veterans who served uh, between 9-11-01 to August 30, 2021. To date, uh, Meeker County veterans, 86 of them have received $92,000 um, for that benefit. And I've, I've assisted probably about, I don't know, uh, probably 30 to 40 of those veterans have come in. It takes me about 20 minutes. So uh, some changes initially when they came out with that program, you had to be a Minnesota veteran, and, uh, had to be listed as your home of record, uh, Minnesota. And they changed that requirement. You had to be a current Minnesota resident. As long as you meet the other parameters, then you could apply. Um, so we've had a few come back in that were initially denied for that. But just to make you aware, the other part of it was uh, uh, a requirement is uh, uh, different like the Iraqi campaign medal or Afghanistan campaign medal. You get different dollar amounts for that. Uh, those are $1,200. Um, and then there was also a, a global war on terrorism medal, GWAT they call it. Well, that stopped, and that's what that second line is, our recipients of Inherit Resolve campaign. That took the place of the global war on terrorism medal is what that was. So a uh, couple of uh, new state benefits, uh, which are really nice. Uh, veterans that are 100% permanent and total service connected uh, that have that disability rating uh, receive uh, free motor vehicle registration plates and uh, title services up to two vehicles. Had a few veterans came in already from Meeker County that took advantage of that. Uh, starting on July 1st, uh, this is a really nice benefit. Uh, they'll be exempt from the motor vehicle excise or sales tax. I think excise tax is the actual, actual term. So, which is, which is a great benefit. Something else that uh, should have been up there, uh, there's a new Montevideo Veterans Open, uh, Home that opened in January of this year. Uh, I've had quite a bit of interest in that already and uh, um, signed up a few veterans, at least on the waiting list. Uh, our office assists them with uh, initially uh, getting put on the active waiting list. I think they have over 200 veterans already on the active waiting list and they, uh, they just opened in January. So, sorry to keep interrupting you, but these new benefits, how do we make these guys aware of it? Um, is there a newsletter that comes? I mean, if they're not involved with the VA, number one, they, or how, is there a way we... So, the Meeker County Veterans Council uh, um, puts out, I, I work with them, we put out a lot of that information, uh, but that's a really good question, Beth. Uh, we can put it in the newsletter as well. The next newsletter comes out in the fall for the county. So um, we could do it on the radio, uh, a couple different things. But. I was going to also mention the Legion does a newsletter a couple times a year. Oh, yeah. And okay. that would be great if you wanted to have a little column in there. Um, they reach some of the older bets because, you know, they're not online or whatever. So okay. maybe talk to Marlon yeah, Meyer. Hey, Tim, Tim, do we have, um, do we know who our 100% service disability vets are? 
through and it, yeah, most that's of them unless problem. they've moved into the county. Correct. Yeah. Then we're not tracking them. It's but probably yes, not. We could, but it's we probably could not a large, large number. Exactly. So we could probably do a direct mailing right to them. When it Absolutely. Happens. But I also think any information, if you want, they always are looking for things in the newsletter, and I'm sure okay. they'd be glad to have some information. I'll uh, let Marlon know to maybe okay. tip off. In uh, Eden Valley Legion does like a quarterly newsletter. Yeah, those Just are the, good places for that. That's okay. 160 members of yeah. the Legion. At least it gets that information. Right. Mm -hmm. So, question, this wouldn't be a new benefit. I just wonder if it still exists. When my dad was 100% disabled, he didn't have to pay real estate taxes. Is that so, still in effect? The, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. The, uh, so there's a property tax exclusion that exists, another state benefit that's, that's uh, been around a while. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, depending on, you have to be at least 70% uh, service connected uh, for a disability. Uh, if you're 70, 80, or 90 percent, uh, you don't pay taxes as long as you apply for it and you meet the requirement. You have to be fully homesteaded for your property. It has to be your primary residence. You don't pay taxes on the first $150,000 of value. Okay. If you're 100 percent permanent in total, uh, you don't pay uh, uh, taxes on the first $300,000 of value. But again, the same requirements, fully homesteaded and primary residence. Wasn't aware of that either. That's nice. Yeah. There, that's... there is a proposal to up that uh, dollar amount, but that uh, has not been approved yet. The uh, 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 Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs has a legislative branch that works and, and brings those types of things forward, as well as the uh, Minnesota Association of County Veterans Service Officers work together uh, on a number of different benefits that they're trying to get passed. Uh, Tim, the Montevideo Vets Home, what, uh, how many residents, and give, give us a little what kind of services do they provide? And so it's it's a uh, it could, uh, it, it's a nursing home. Okay. So um, and even up to up to dementia type care, every unit is outfitted for that. Okay. I believe it's in the seventies that they can take like seventy two or seventy four as far as veterans, okay. and they can also take uh, spouses as well. The spouse would have to pay. Uh, and, and I should back up a little bit. If a veteran is seventy percent service connected. Um, they, that uh, veteran's home, that nursing home, or a VA contracting home, contracted nursing home is free to the veteran, not to the spouse. The spouse can go into that same nursing home and would have to pay. But uh, I think right now the, the Montevideo nursing home has only got about 20 <coughs> residents that are going through their process of being VA uh, accredited. Okay. It's a really nice facility, though. And I'm sure staffing it up is an issue for them also. They've had some challenges there, yeah. correct? I think, I think we heard that at Prime West that yes. they were struggling to staff up. Thank you for the uh, questions and the recommendations. Sure. I, I'll definitely uh, get a hold of the Legion and, and get that information okay. out to them. Trends, uh, what we've seen, uh, the VA uh, stack, a little explanation on what that is. Uh, it, it stands for Promise to Address Comprehensive Toxins. Uh, PACT, P-A-C-T, is passed into law in August of 2022. It expands and uh, extends eligibility for VA health care for veterans exposed to burn pits uh, and other toxins. Uh, and it really focuses on uh, Vietnam era veterans, Gulf War, post-911 veterans. Uh, I would say that, and this is just an estimate, I have no way of really tracking this. I, I did kind of take a look at one month or and, and try to figure it out, but I'd say about 30% of all the claims that are, we process through our office are PACT Act related. Uh, the PACT Act uh, has what they call presumptive conditions. So for example, if you were in, uh, in Vietnam, you served in Vietnam, boots on the ground or within 12 nautical miles, what they call the blue water name. They uh, have a list of presumptive uh, conditions, uh, say for example, like hypertension or heart disease, if you have that current uh, di medical diagnosis, you will get service connected at what level depends on your current symptoms, uh, which is uh, which is a nice benefit for the veterans. Um, same thing, a list of presumptive conditions for each one of those uh, post-911 and uh, Gulf War era veterans as well for the burn pit exposure. So. It, about a third of all that we're doing are, are related to that. Uh, VetPro is our, our new software we've had for a little while now. Uh, it's 
really moving our office toward paperless. I mean, I would like to say we'd be 100% paperless, but I don't know if that will ever happen. So um, uh, sometimes veterans will, yeah. <laughs> it won't. We're able to do digital signatures. Uh, um, and, a, and a benefit also of the uh, uh, software is that I, we can do now offer phone appointments. So if someone's like a snowbird, they're in Arizona, Florida, or they can't come in for some reason, uh, we can do it over the phone. And then if they're able to navigate it uh, right from VetPro, uh, I have an option to uh, select uh, or basically emails them and ask them for a digital signature. It does some identification before they sign, excuse me, like a social security number and some other information. And then they, they can, they basically use their phone like a signature pad and uh, they just take their finger or whatever they want and sign it and hit the green check mark and it comes back to me instantly. So cool. it's, it's pretty nice to do that. And and on a side note too, the, the appointments are, uh, that's, that's really opens up kind of a whole new level of, of service that we can provide, uh, especially for some of those veterans that uh, can't make it in there. They do have to be able to navigate the that type of system. That could be an issue, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we had heard before, I hate to keep asking, but previously that Vietnam vets are the hardest to reach. Is that true? Are we getting more Vietnam vets in or no? I I don't know if I would say that. Um, I, the, the biggest struggle I would say sometimes is that, you know, they're aware of the benefits, but they don't think that they deserve them. That's probably the I have some struggle. relatives that are. That's and, and, and even when veterans get service connected, they came in, they're just extremely appreciative and, and whatever level they're at because they're receiving compensation on a monthly basis for that if they meet that criteria. And, and I always tell them, I said, you would not be receiving that if you didn't meet the criteria. Exactly. So, and they earned it too, right? Absolutely. They served in those areas and, and, and those locations where they're exposed to Agent Orange and other toxins. Thank you. Next slide. Just to give you an idea of some of the impact that we have on veterans' lives, I, I just threw this slide in here. Um, the Purple Heart story was pretty interesting. It's, it's not, uh, has not been approved yet, but a Vietnam veteran was in my office last year. Uh, was wounded in combat uh, over 50 years ago and had pretty much given up on applying for, you know, or getting that Purple Heart. Uh, so we went through the process, it goes to the Army Review Board, uh, still in process, but a lot of times what we do is uh, kind of give veterans hope too, because uh, that was something that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I won't get into the whole story because I can't get into a lot of details, but uh, it, it really is pretty impactful sometimes. Uh, I should have spelled <laughs> this out, but DIC, uh, the next line there is dependency indemnity compensation, and this has a pretty impa a big impact as well. So. If uh, a veteran dies of a service-connected issue and it's on the death certificate, uh, this, the surviving spouse uh, can apply for what's called Dependency Indemnity Compensation, or DIC. And it's currently what uh, $1,626 a month tax-free if they meet the requirements. Uh, and then once they get that, they can apply for a CHAMP VA, which is uh, free health care. Uh, those two right there, and, and to give you an idea how impactful that is, uh, some veteran spouses or, or dependents as well can apply for it if they meet the criteria. Have have been to the point where you know the veteran passes away and, and the income's not there anymore, Social Security's not there, all of that, um, and they would have to go back to work. And and those two programs right there uh, allow them to stay home. So pretty pretty impactful. Um, the last one, enrollment in the VA healthcare system, the St. Claude VA healthcare system, Minneapolis VA healthcare system. Uh, we enroll a number of veterans, mostly in the St. Claude VA healthcare system, and it it's a healthcare system and not insurance, and it really gives them access to quality healthcare focused on veterans' needs, and that's uh, that really does help a lot of veterans out. Maybe they can't afford something, and the VA will take care of them. A lot of times, they uh, uh, I mean they just take they take really good care of them. Uh, once you get at least 10% service connected, there are free hearing aids there, uh, glasses, there's all kinds of great benefits. And it's a really, really good healthcare system. That concludes my presentation, subject to your questions.
I think I've asked enough. <laughs> okay. Okay. I do have two questions for you. Um, what do you think is your biggest roadblock that, you, that you're encountering? Is, is there one? That was a good question. Now I got to think about it for a minute. You know, um, as far as getting to veterans, it's uh, Andrew and I've talked about this numerous times. It's getting to the younger veterans. They they just don't come in, even though you reach out to them. A lot of it is what we'll receive a notification of from the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. Hey, you know, a, a veteran from Meeker County uh, exited service. Uh, Here's our home of record. We'll send them a we'll send them a, a letter. I'll reach out to them, and 99% and of the time, they might have lived in Meeker County or, or or you know grew up here. They exited service in San Diego. They didn't come back. Yeah. So is is what a majority of it is that. But even the ones that are here, they're hard to get to come into the office. It's a younger younger group. I, I don't know what exactly we had talked about. All kinds of different ways to do that. Maybe social media. But uh, it's it's hard to get them to come. That's that's a real challenge. I think they think they got to be like old. I don't, you know, because I have a couple brothers that were in Vietnam. And my one is just recently finally. I don't need to. Well, why not go? You know, but so I think that's part of it. But then when I go up there, you got the Vietnam vets giving people rides, and I'm thinking, man, they look old. And then I remember <laughs> Vietnam was the war I was. You know that so. One other challenge is the, uh, I didn't mention it during the slide, but uh, our volunteer drivers are all in their 70s except for one guy in his early oh, sure. 60s. Yeah. So uh, we had talked about this previously, I think, before at some point. You know, I, hopefully we'll be able to continue to get volunteer drivers as they retire. Um, and that, it, well, hopefully. But Try to remember 70 as an old. Tip. Okay. <laughs> That's the new 60. Okay. The new 60. The new 60. <laughs> well, and, and we're not seeing those younger veterans in the legions either. Um, you know, they'll or they'll join, and you'll never see them. I mean, they're, they're a member, but that's why get them actively engaged. That's why legions are, are closing up, and be, because yeah. the older guys are passing on, and the younger guys, Vietnam vets, have kind of made their own whatever. They have I, their own. Plan. I'm young in the legion. Right. I, I mean, I am. And I've watched it over 30 years, and it's hard because I'm thinking if somebody doesn't start coming to these meetings and getting involved, we're not going to be here, yeah. which we don't want. So, You know, just thinking about one other uh, thing that, uh, that I've noticed is uh, if the younger veterans do come into my office, it's not for the benefit side of things like, like compensation. It's for education. Mm -hmm. They, they want to use their GI Bill. And, and there's it. actually a... Uh, Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs rep out of St. Cloud that is really fantastic that I always refer people to. And they, by the way, they also have, I think this is part of DEEB though, not M MDVA, there's a veterans employment rep that I've referred many veterans to that'll work with veterans in helping them determine what they want to do, build a resume, apply for a job, interview skills, the whole thing. And they're, uh, they're he's pretty good at what he does, so that particular so that's a, that's a great benefit. And that's through DEED, Minnesota uh, DEED, D-E-E-D. -E -E mm -hmm. Cool. So my second question, obviously you're going to be moving because the remodel will change things over there. But the one thing I do hear on a frequent basis is it's difficult if they're physically challenged to get up the um, steps. Up the steps. We, uh, yeah. we will be closer. Uh, we're uh, you know, down around the corner. Um, so we are closer to the handicap uh, handicap parking. Uh, I just had a veteran come in, uh, well, end of the day on yesterday, that uh, that was walking really slow down the hallway. You know, I know it's been mentioned in the past, but just thinking about uh, out loud about that, it probably wouldn't hurt to have like a wheelchair available in the front, if that's okay. I think the outside steps are the biggest issue. Oh, there, there's a ramp in the front. Oh, there is a ramp? Yeah, mm -hmm. but, okay. but that main entrance is a ramp. Oh, through the main, over the main front. Entrance, but, which is what we're going to get closer okay. to. Okay. Some, uh, correct, but some of them uh, still are challenged if they're with a walker. They're still using that ramp, but it's still, no matter what distance they have to go. Yes, I, I didn't even know there was a ramp, so. 
I know Paul from Social Service had mentioned there would have been a wheelchair there at one point, so maybe that's something we can explore. Just putting the wheelchair up. You know, if they're coming in with our wheelchair, that's one thing. Uh, so uh, I know the new uh, desk system will allow, is, is adjustable, the peninsula part of it, so that uh, if they're coming in with a wheelchair, we have the option to move it up. So if they need to sign something or get up close to the, the desk, as it is right now, they, can't, they have to kind of come to the side. Uh, and I think it's I, it always bothered me that the office was so small. If you know, if you're talking to somebody, it's hard to have privacy, really. Yep. And the new office has two enclosed spaces for that right. reason. That's a good thing. And I don't know what size-wise comparison is. I think it's probably close to double. Yeah, we the <coughs> private office is certainly larger than the current office. Right. Right. And we have a locked storage area, mm -hmm. so that'll be that'll be nice as well. And then uh, at some point down the road, we have a table for a computer that veterans will have access to mm. once we get the, the computer down the road. Good. No other questions for Tim? Thank you very much. Thank you for what you're doing, Tim. way more than my 15 minutes. <laughs> that was interesting. We don't hear from you very often. It. Right. It's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Next on our agenda is Phil Schmalz, and I, I see he's changed his look a little bit. Sure has. It's gotten a lot better. <laughs> Hair color's about almost not quite the same. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Mark. Mark Chase with the Highway Department. Just got this one quick thing. Um, requesting to approve this... Uh, H sit project to Camco out of Dassel for the um, enhanced striping in Meeker County. Goes along um, various county roads, expanding the four inch stripe to a six inch. I was kind of surprised to see that there was such a huge increase, even over the um, local estimated amount. It, is there a reason for that? Is it just like everything else? It's going up. You bought groceries lately? Yeah, no kidding. It was a safety project. We have to apply <coughs> at least a couple years in advance. So our oh. estimate was for two years ago. I see. And just like everything else, it's gone up 40%. But, you know. No. Refresh me at our last meeting. Did we not approve a, another striping? And I think Camco got that. That was probably for the seasonal. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah, so there's two contracts this year for striping, and the same company's got both. Yep, same company will be low bidder on. It's good because if it wasn't for Camco, there's only, only one other bidder on the list. Oh. Because they've, Sir Lines Alive has bought all three other companies, and if you don't like competition, you buy them out, I guess. <laughs> that's how it works nowadays. Mm -hmm. Further questions? Mr. Chair, I move to award the 2024 HSIP pavement markings contract to Camco of Dassel, Minnesota for an estimated total cost of $124,966.40. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Bredesen. Is there a second? I'll second, Mr. Chair. Second by Commissioner Schmidt. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. Welcome. Sir Lines a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's a great name. Sir Lines a lot. <laughs> Good morning, Barb. Good morning. So I come before you with the task to help the county designate a newspaper. As we know, the independent review, which has been around for a long time. We'll cease operation at the end of this month with the last issue being on the 24th. Uh, this became a really uh, emotional project as I met with uh, via phone and email to a lot of the area. So I'm going to review just a little bit of what we had to go through as I work through this. You know, the county is required to have a designated newspaper, and both Andrew and I have had numerous people reach out um, from the school, the city, Darwin reached out yesterday, Litchfield, all looking toward the county for some guidance on what the county is going to do. So this is a pretty large task that we're going to have to work through here this morning. 
So there's priorities in the statute that are required. First off, we shall designate a qualified newspaper with certain priorities. Known locality is one, and that is uh, we de designate one as a locality in our in our political subdivision, which would have been Meeker County. Secondly, if they have a satellite or a secondary office, then they are to get consideration. As we know, that doesn't qualify in any of the situations that I'm bringing towards you. So we need to look at general circulation in locality, and that's where um, we will identify what I've uh, researched as we've gone through. Andy, do you want to put my next slide up just please? Oh, thank you. So I do have a, just a simplified chart as we look at these. So what the Eden Valley Voice, Eden Valley Voice covers up uh, the northern part. It's published on Wednesdays. And it um, is located in Eden Valley, however, just a few feet out of Meeker County and Stearns County. They have a circulation that comes to... Um, I got a burp. Okay, good. That circulation comes to about 225 in um, Beaker County. These are estimates, and they do have some online presentations. They do a saturation issue for about 1,400 pieces, but keep in mind where their location is. So 50% of their saturation is usually in the, not in Beaker County. I also had a long discussion with the Enterprise Dispatch, which is also to our east. They publish on Fridays. They have approximately 477 registrations or circulations in Meeker County and a small amount of online publications. When we go to the Painesville Press, which is a sister to the Eden Valley Voice, for those of you that are familiar with that arrangement or not, and they have approximately 93 um, known Meeker County subscriptions in the Union Grove area north of uh, of the south side of Painesville. They also have some online publications, but we're unable to identify to me which ones belong to Meeker County. The Tri-County News, um, a long-established um, organization uh, since 1948, very well known in that area, the Tri-County, so it covers Meeker, Wright, and Stearns, and a lot of the localities that you saw in my um, presentation where I outlined um, Kimball, Watkins, Eden Valley. So the addresses there would be more the um, Kimball, Kingston area, Watkins, um, some Eden Valley for them, some South Haven that belong to uh, Meeker County, uh, approximately 315 with um, about 68 that are identified to be Meeker County email addresses. I also worked with the West Central Union after I um, was able to reach them and also had some discussion with Candy Ojai County because Candy Ojai County goes between the West Central and the New London daily or weekly newspaper for their legal newspaper. So I had some conversation with them regarding the workability and um, how that particular newspaper functions. So before you is the need for you to identify. Some of the things that I did here in talking to each of these individuals that there are you know, many moving parts for Litchfield and Hutchinson area. It's certainly not ideal in any way. Um, what may serve the county best until there's a clear idea of how these chips land might be some type of a, a shared or a trial period because it was concerning to each one as I talked to them as we zero in on one that we would be likely favoring their leadership. Um, I didn't hear what you said. Mm -hmm. Favor their readership or their subscriptions. So the editors were seriously trying to become part of the long-term solution. I did have one editor indicate that maybe they came up with a sharing obligation and that we maybe chose um, one of them and asked them to split the revenue for a period of time, you know, giving people or making notes to people that we would have more than one legal. So um, that was very concerning in each conversation that I had. I'm not sure if any of them reached out to either, any of you. I did indicate where they could as we were going through this process. I also indicated to each person that has talked to me and also to Andrew that we would be making a decision today because we have requirements that 
begin right at the end of the Litchfield Independent Review, namely some public hearings, um, some newspaper items for the election. So we do not have a choice to not do this today. And the Independent is ending now the end of the month? The 24th is their last edition. Yeah. So with that, I put a chart together. Um, Andrew and I kind of <coughs> brainstormed this as to how we would present this. And you will see that the motion is pretty big. <laughs> so we need, we need one news, we need a newspaper till the end of the year. Is it? Correct. Then we yes. can relook. So I did ask Andrew um, because I was looking at your circulation numbers: you know, Eden Valley two twenty five, Dassel four seventy seven, and so on. I wanted to know what circulation numbers did the Independent have? I do have that. And that was what, 15? 10,199 10, copies were circulated. But the actual subscribers um, is 1,500. 1,500. Right. So that was, that was huge compared yes. to our competition here with, with yeah, our options. 1,508, that's that, correct. That was interesting information. And they had Thank a you. small amount of online. Their, yeah. their online did not take off. Now, Andrew, do you have a preference? I, I do not have a preference. You know, as we sit and weigh this, there's there's a couple of things I think to, it's worth consideration. One is cost. Each of these would cost more than what we are paying the independent review. Um, independent review provided us with a discount on re um, reprints, and, and there are certain things that we have to print multiple times. Certain bid notices, for example, we have to print for you know three weeks. Um, Tri County News and West Central provide a similar setup both of which are more expensive than what we were paying for the first run with independent review. Um, you could look at it and say that, you know, where you want to have your, your larger circulation, you want to publish in that paper because you're going to hit more people in within the county, but that is the most expensive per column inch. Yeah, of course. So, you know, if you look at it purely from a cost standpoint, <coughs> Valley Watkins Voice makes sense because uh, it's, you know, slightly more than what we were paying before and it's the least expensive that's on the list there. Um, but it's the second lowest as far as circulation. Mm. Um, you know, West Central Tribune is, is not much less expensive than Enterprise Dispatch, uh, and you're getting fewer people. Tri-County News is kind of right in the middle um, of each of those things, <coughs> so, each of those factors. One factor that was brought up in each time I was discussing is that we currently do a lot of sharing with the school, Castle in, in Litchfield, and so the enterprise is already covering some of those um, crossovers, you might say. So it was one of the plugs. I didn't put it in the actual written paperwork because one could say, you know, that may be not really influential. Being it's a half a year, I'm just kind of looking at price. Because I, I, I really think that I ask you every year about are they going to keep up having it because we're going to see more of this, I'm sure. These little papers aren't going to survive. I mean, well, one thing because everything's up, online, right? and one thing that was brought up as I was spoke, uh, speaking to my colleagues, I, I actually talked to quite a few of my neighbor uh, auditors. We have to publish for the ballot, and as it gets less and less papers to publish in, it's going to be rougher. Expensive, and yet it's still required that we publish. So, are we all going to be publishing the, the federal part or the state part because we overlap? And how more confusing is that? One of my concerns as I read this through <clears throat> was, of course, the location. Mm -hmm. And we have, we have Eden Valley, that's north. Mm -hmm. Dassel East, Painesville, north. Tri-County is north. West Central is west. The Independent was so centrally located, and it had such a large circulation um, that it was, of course, ideal. And I got to thinking, like Paul's area, They've also lost the Hutch Leader, is now going away with the Independent. So how do we even access those people in our southern part? Um, I have to ask this question. You said, isn't there two of them that do a once a month, they do a... F yes. The um, Eden Valley Voice will do a saturation once a month, and so does the Tri-County. But one of the concerns they had with the saturation is if they were to enlarge that territory that they currently cover, how were they going to cover that cost? So cost was a huge item in every one of these mm -hmm. that I spoke with. 
also the Enterprise Dispatch is strongly looking at reaching toward Litchfield and Hutch. How successful they will be, I don't know. But they were strongly giving that pitch as well to me that they were going to look at that area. They I think seem they to cover be they cover viable. some of our stuff now. Though. They cover a lot of our yeah. stuff. I, I um, see things in there now. Right. And we do. We and I know when we, I was running for commissioner, they did a story yes. on all of us, and so I kind of leaned toward them. But the prices. Well, go ahead. Uh, if I made well, so about a thousand Meeker residents with. Litchfield paper was the Litchfield. They they had fifteen hundred and eight newspapers, and the advertiser went to ten thousand one hundred ninety nine copies. So a thousand fifteen hundred newspapers. The the circulation is what they told me. They they, they I didn't get a lot of breakdown. If it's going, okay. Right. So that could have gone out of Meeker County for who knows how many. And and I would have. I'm assuming these larger communities with this void in here will get, somebody will expand into them and we may see that in the next, right. before coming the, the year. I'm curious, it, I think a lot of people buy a paper so that they can see the kids in the sports events, if they read the school board minutes, the county board minutes, the city council minutes. Mm -hmm. But then Andrew told me the reason that the county board minutes get into the newspaper is we pay for that. It's not something that we have to do. No, it, is. it is something that we yes. must publish board yes. minutes, right. but the county pays to have that right. done. Mm -hmm. So in the second paragraph, the required publications by statute are the delinquent tax list, which is very large. You, you just saw that. The board of equalization proceedings, we do adjustments to land that's required. Mm -hmm. The county financial or portions of that, not its entirety, and it's 300 pages long. The county board minutes, the adopted budget summary as required, election details and notices to voters, and there's numerous, ordinance changes and planning and zoning, conditional use, interim use, and board of appeal hearings. Those are minimally required. And we, we, we pay, pay for, for every one of them. Because <clears throat> I was curious if any of these newspapers, just on their own, cover some of those things just for news sake. I do have um, success with writing articles for election purposes. They do some, you know, reader items. They also take those that were requ are required. How about like school board minutes and city mm -hmm. council? See, like, and I didn't check on their mm -hmm. on their requirements. It, uh, yeah, I don't I would assume that if they're publishing minutes it's it's the same requirement as what the county board has. Okay. Um, I would say that we get you know, we get coverage in a variety of, of newspapers um, as far as the goings on of the county government. Um, Enterprise Dispatch certainly does. West Central Tribune will have articles in their paper. Um, I, I have not spent much time reading the Tri County News or the Eden Valley Watkins Voice to, to know what sort of coverage that no. we're receiving in there. So, um, they do. They do. Yeah. School board. They now. do an inside yeah. job in Tri County. Yeah. Yeah. I received Tri County, and I actually went and purchased every one of them yeah. or found them so that I could work on this project. I'm, I'm not favoring the price, but um, the Enterprise Dispatch and the fact that they said they might be considering. In my conversation with that him, that intrigues me. He was definitely <laughs> probably between him and the Tri County Gene at Tri County. I felt gave me the most sense that they wanted to reach out and potentially could have some um, interest. D uh, Dale from the Enterprise was very helpful in my discussion. Mr. Chair, I also would be leaning toward the Enterprise, I think. It's six months, right? Or what do we have left here? We have to come to the board every year. Yeah, so, so if we don't want to do it, so. Um, do you think that price those prices up there are firm. They're not uh, negotiable because all of a sudden they're going to get a significant amount of, what did, uh, you and I discussed this 000. yesterday. How many thousand did we pay? 31,000 is what we paid last year. Yes. So, That's a huge. You know, I don't, I don't look for this to get cheaper. I look for it to get more expensive because to be honest with you, I haven't purchased a paper for a long time. I go online and do everything. So I have one additional question now. This does not commit us for the balance of the year. Should someone all of a sudden strike a deal 
and by the independent, we could come back and revisit this, correct? Mm -hmm. I think you could put that in the motion because at this point we delegate and, you know, if you're going to delegate, one of them suggested you delegate three months. Maybe I come back in three months. Do you really think anything's going to be done here by the well, end? Well, there was an attempt no, to but buy. And they were turned yeah. down. Yep. So I did see that. I mean, that's a big facility mm -hmm. sitting there with some expensive equipment, presses and so forth. And right. I have to believe it's an intriguing That's the Crow River business. Press, right, yeah. on the highway when you come into Hutch? So I, I am hopeful that we'll get something local back. My, my suggestion would be that if we have um, something change, we could certainly come back. I wouldn't put a condition in the motion specifically because, you know, if you put, say, three months out there, then you're required so to come back and take yeah. other action three months even yeah. if something hasn't changed. So, Tim, I was listening to the radio this morning, and you were covering the city council news from last night, and they were talking about this very same issue. And, of course, I was driving in. I did not catch their first choice, but their second choice was Eden Valley. Can you tell me what their first choice first was? Enterprise. It was the Dassel. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Tim carries all our meeting stuff yep. on KLFT. I go in and look. does a good job. You bet. But that doesn't count, I guess. No. So. Well, not zeroing in on any one line, but I have some comments that I could bring that were given to me. So there are many moving parts right now, and we don't want to promise anything can't come through on, but are seriously trying to be part of a long-term solution for local media, was one of the comments. Who is that from? Um, the, group oh, the group? Oh, the group? Oh, yeah, I saw that. The other one um, came through as for sharing revenue because we talked about that. We would need more information on that possibility. So there was some discussion on one of the um, options here was to do that. Um, I'm sure Meeker County likes everyone's saturation numbers, but those saturation issues come at a greater cost since we would be printing in Nellie. This was another comment for you just to think out, out, of, out of the box. Um, what's one of the other ones? Um, so the, there was just lots of emotional pieces that were you know, discussed and also put in some of the writing. From my previous employment, um, a lot of newspapers, second class periodical edition, is based on their paid advertising and within it, their costs for mailing. Which is, which is the issue because everybody's going to social media. It's well, I understand what they're saying. It's going, it's going to cost them more, not only for the print, but in their postage to mail it. And I was pleasantly surprised on their online publications. Now, the online, if I understand correctly, and uh, digging this information out was testy, um, in terms of them, there's free onlines, and you know, you get to two or three times, and you also have special people that get online at no cost. I believe these were subscribers that paid some token. I could be wrong on all five of the choices, but I believe that's what they told me. Andrew, if we went with the highest, I'm just doing this for a ballpark. If $31,000 was our our tab last year, what would six months at a higher rate end up costing us? It's difficult to say because in that $31,000 was the um, the four dollar and eighty four dollar and thirty six cents for repeats. So that's a significantly oh. different change. But if we were to um, you know make the assumption that Everything was at 745. And the other thing is we have a general election this year and another primary this year, both of which are going to be um, you know, more expensive than, um, than what we would have done last year when we didn't have those big elections. But um, one big spending item is done, and that is the publication of the delinquent, which costs pretty close to $3,000. So that's already done for this year. And the price that we pay is not based on the number of <laughs> circulation papers, it's because like if, if we were to do the math with Dassel, it's it's yeah. just a comp. So because I know I visited with Andrew, and I said, well, what if what if we printed West Central Tribune and Dassel, we'd get East and West <coughs> if if we'd be able to cover the county that way, but the cost would be double. Yeah. Okay. It, assuming it was the 
everything was paid at seven forty five per column inch previously, um, and we are you know, we're a third of the way through the year right now. Um, and we used the exact same number of column inches as last year, and it was evenly distributed across the year. There's a lot of, Inverious. a lot of, you don't know ifs. Yep. I'm giving you here, you're looking at about thirty six thousand dollars for the rest of the year at twelve ninety per column inch for the rest of the year. Between now, I mean, between the end of April and December thirty first. Well, I'm going to make a motion on it. Couldn't die for a lack of second, but I'm going to move to designate the Enterprise Dispatch as for publication of public notices for Meeker County to the end of 2000. We have a motion by Commissioner Oberg. Is there a second? I'll second that, Mr. Chair. We have a second by Commissioner Schmidt. Is there any further discussion? Now, does this, does this tie us in then through the end of the year? Did we want to... Well, so there were some suggestions. What well, Andrew said, months, let's or, just leave it like this. I think if you leave it like, you leave it like this, mm -hmm. if there's a significant change, another paper, uh, if someone comes in and, and reopens the independent review between now and the end of the year, I think we can have a conversation with them, and you know, we can come back to the board at this point. And it would get us through the end of the year. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item I was uh, bringing before you is digitizing uh, some additional historical books, such as the commissioner records, uh, the school district boundary books, which I think are very important, and also the section corner books as we work toward um, memorializing those. I think most of you are familiar with the recording fee. The recording fee is $46, to which it is divided up. Um, $10.50 goes automatically to the state treasury, $10.00 to go into the technology fund and 2550 goes to the general fund in the general fund that is also split where there is the compliance part and there is technology um, or general general and the compliance needs county board approval but it also has a fairly narrow scope of what we can use to pay for that that fund has an excess of two hundred thousand dollars and so Andrew has charged me with bringing a budget determination how can it be used and I worked with a lot of the other recorders this particular project because we are definitely in compliance we have to be in compliance that means documents coming in have to go in through the system and out in the 10 days 10 working days and we always meet that requirement so the estimated um, price of this project is 8478 and this will also increase our archive or our, our maintenance annual fee <coughs> by 174 dollars one of the items that we have to be careful for as we do is that this cannot supplement normal operating expenses of the Office of the Recorder or Register of Titles. So the increase of the annual fee was one of my concerns, but I believe that we can work through more <coughs> opportunities in the compliance fund, bring it to the county board, and likely be able to subsidize that particular extra expense as we go into the future, if that makes sense. Yeah, really the intent was you're not going to pay for the existing staff out of the compliance fund. Questions? No. Uh, typically, we also wouldn't bring forward a, a purchase that's under $10,000, but because statute requires that this be uh, the use of the compliance fund sale is approved by the county board, that's why we're here with this. Otherwise, it would just be done through our normal purchasing procedure. What did you say the balance on that fund as well? It's a little over 200000 right now. It's been suggested in the past that could we buy a snowplow with it? And we were told no. No. <laughs> Just thought I'd try one more time. It's worth a shot. <laughs> Unless that plow is pushing documents. There's a power. story behind that, I'll tell you, after the meeting. <laughs> oh, my gracious. But there might be more opportunities we could expand on because um, I think we need to find a budget reason to use that yep. and also identify why we have to put that many dollars in that fund if it's that restricted. Okay. Looking for a motion? Yep. Looking for a motion. I move to approve a proposal from ARCA Search Digital Archiving Services to provide a digital preservation of historical commissioner minutes, records, school district boundary book, and section corner books as an addition to existing Meeker County searchable archive. A motion by Commissioner Bredesen. Is there a second? I'll second, Mr. Chair. Second by Commissioner Schmidt. Is there any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. Greg Schultz. Yes. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Land use director. This morning, I got three items for the agenda. First one is the see, Jeff and Bonnie Albright landscaping project on Lake Stella. It's going to be a pretty extensive. From the plan, you maybe can't tell. Be a pretty extensive project. Um, <laughs> Four boulder walls, 25 feet in length, two boulder walls, 40 feet in length, one boulder wall, 50 feet in length, 80 feet of rip riprap, roughly. It's a pretty steep site, as you see there. It's going to be a total of about 165 cubic yards, roughly. It's a little obese. It's going to be pretty extensive on that shoreline to stabilize that. That slope there, terrace, terrace system, you can tell from the site map. It up. Questions for Greg? <coughs> Do looking, looking for a <laughs> Well, if we have no questions, I will be. Yes. If you notice in my notes, Ethan Jameson now is Emily Javens left, went to the DNR in St. Paul, so Ethan's back and double duty as the manager and our area rep as well. I just figured to call that out just a couple weeks ago, so. Mr. Chair, I'll move to approve the application for conditional use permit number 16366 to move more than 10 cubic yards of material within the shore impact zone and 50 cubic yards of material in the shoreline district of the recreational development like Stella with the conditions. I have a motion by Commissioner Oberg. Is there a second? I'll second that. And a second by Commissioner Bredesen. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next item I got is by Catherine Mayer on Trust on Lake Minabel. This again is going to be another pretty extensive project. Um, it's going to be uh, about 113 cubic yards of boulder walls. Those, each of those walls are about 75, 80 feet long, about 100 feet of riprap. Um, 40 yards of block, 106 cubic yards of dirt, 36 yards of pavers, total of about 490 cubic yards of materials are going to be moved or brought into this project, so it's rather large. Hmm. Uh, Greg Jans had indicated the slope was much greater, so he must have been down on the bottom and walked back up or... Maybe he thought it felt much greater <laughs> on the way back up. Any questions for Greg? <clears throat> Hearing none, I'd be looking for a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll move to approve the application for conditional use permit 16367 to move more than 10 cubic yards of material in the shoreland shore impact zone and 50 cubic yards of material in the shoreland district of the Recreational Development Lake Mini Bell with the conditions. We have a motion by Commissioner Schmidt. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Commissioner Bredesen. Is there any further discussion? I had called Greg and asked about um, septic um, compliances, and usually they're printed within the first page of the materials that we receive, but it is included in the packet. Um, that there will have to be a septic compliance. Yeah. This is a system that was put in 2017. I actually was on site when it's been, so it's fairly new, so I'm pretty confident it'll pass that compliance. But if it didn't, that would halt it anyway. Yeah. Yep. Right? It didn't so. start construction until that was done, so. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Keith and Cindy Fortune and IEP for second going through a bud relative at the location. So one of Keith's sons is going to be moving onto the property and then they're going to be building a, a shelves type um, dwelling on the property where you can see my highlight there on the right hand side picture in that location right there. Then when they're gone or the 
no longer occupying, and that'll be turned back into a, a shed. The agricultural jobs up here as well happen. That's their plan. For a period of about 20 years is what they're looking for. Questions for Greg? We are seeing more shelves, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. And I think absolutely Warner likes it because you don't have to deal with a, a single wide trailer or double wide trailer when it's done. It can be converted into something that's usable on the property. So what they do when they build is they put in like big headers for uh, big, big, big doorway systems, and that thing, to drive machinery and vehicles and stuff like that in there. So they, they close them up when they're living in there. They just open them up and put a door in them. It's not occupied anymore. So I think it's a really smart idea to do with that. Some of them are pretty nice. Oh, really yeah. nice, yeah. And they landscape them. Yeah. Yeah, oh. I mean, it's just, yeah. Further questions for Greg? Mr. Hearing Chair? none, I'd yeah. entertain a motion. Chair, I move to approve an interim use permit to allow a temporary second dwelling for blood relative for 20 years at the property located at 26331 County State 8 Highway Number 1, Litchfield, with the conditions. We have a motion by Commissioner Bredesen. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Oberg. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> So, Mr. Chair, at this point, because we have an attorney who's going to be participating with <coughs> us uh, remotely, uh, I suggest that we flip the, the two closed session discussion, at the one that's for the ditch authority. Can we do a little break? We Shall we um, move to closed session and then take the break? No. It's called or take it first? Okay. Yeah, we'll, we can take first. <coughs> okay. And then we're going to flip. flip. We're going to flip.